I am many, many things. Not just one thing, but several. <laughs> Amongst atheist, metal freak, goth boy, I am also a transhuman. Which I'm very proud to say and happy to see that the movement is finally coming mainstream. But as a transhuman, I believe that it is a good idea to use technology to enhance our own capacity. I mean, look at us. Humans are pathetically weak and incapable without technology. Without technology, we pretty much can't do anything aside from consume food, reproduce, pass bowel, and urine. Technology enables us to do everything we do today. Technology is so important to humanity that if there was a techno cost, it would result in a 90% extinction of humanity. And this is obviously true. Yet so many people employ this huge fear of technology. And I don't understand. Because technology is the only concept, the only institution, the only idea that has not betrayed us. The store is lying to you, the church is lying to you, the president is lying to you. Technology cannot, has not, and will not ever do that. I suppose people like H.G. Wells, who wrote War of the Worlds, who was totally obsessed with the end of humanity, and Sophia Stewart, original writer of the Matrix trilogy, are probably very responsible for all the fear that many humans have of technology. But this fear is completely and totally illogical, because no doubt, today it helps you in every way you imagine. Imagine living in a world where there is no technology. None. No running water, no electricity, no way to prepare or conserve food or keep it from rotting. I mean, the world was pretty fucking brutal before the Industrial Revolution, folks. And I'm not sure a lot of people are aware of the hardship that we went through before the technological age, the information age today. I believe a lot of people take science and technology for granted. They don't realize just how important it is to living the way we do today. And those people who speak out against it, you know who I'm talking about, are in serious need of a wake-up call. How dare you stand there and bastardize and speak out against science when it's the only reason you live the way you do. It's the only reason you are so comfortable standing there in front of your computer with enough bandwidth to power a third world country. Who the hell do you think you are? Who are you to speak out against all of these things that you, one, don't really know about or understand to rely upon every single day of your life and three are making use of right this very second to listen to this message if you hate technology move deep into the woods and then somewhere and go just 60 days with no electricity no running water no refrigeration no internet, no anything. Not only will you become bored to tears, but I bet 90% of you people that are listening to this aren't survivalists. Most of you people who would take this dare would be dead within weeks. You'd probably consume some kind of berry that was poisonous or some kind of fungus or maybe you'd get mauled or eaten by a wild animal. But seriously, folks, Either stop bastardizing technology and stop bastardizing science and making fun and invalidating and speaking against while you use it at the same time. Seriously, take your hypocrisy where it's wanted. Maybe you can join some kind of technophobic commune and sell your homegrown vegetables on the side of your street for the rest of your life if you are so hateful towards science and technology. Anyhow, let's steer away from the idiots and get back to transhumanism. 
the main forms of technology that are driving the transhuman movement is known as NBIC. N-B-I-C. It stands for nanotechnology, biotechnology, information technology, and computation. Another, these technologies can also be known as GNR, genetics, nanotechnology, robotics. Not Guns N' Roses, as badass as they are. <laughs> Two people very important to the transhuman movement, the singularitarian movement, are Ray Kurzweil and Dr. Steele. I love Dr. Steele's music, and his message is as beautiful and astounding and perfect as his music is, at least to me. And Ray Kurzweil is a very important futurist and inventor for the technological era when the technological singularity occurs around 2050, which most of the people watching this, reading this, uh, whatever, listening to this, will likely be alive for. The technological singularity will transform humanity so much that there will need to be a new definition of what it means to be human. We will no longer be bound to our mortality. I personally am an immortalist. I don't believe in an afterlife, and as much as I don't have an impending fear of death, I would prefer to stay alive a little longer. I got a lot of shit I want to do, and it's gonna take more than one lifetime to get it all done. For me, it would be tragic to have to pass away before I could experience all the things that I want to experience in my lifetime. I see death as a phase, as a result of a malfunctioning system, and these malfunctions can be corrected, and we're learning how to correct them. We've actually got mice that have been treated and are immortalized. We've got some human skin cells in a lab that do not age and multiply eternally without becoming cancerous, and that's a beautiful, wonderful breakthrough for humanity. And nanotech. Obviously, my favorite field of science is awesome. I mean, it has literally unlimited applications. Nanotechnology will definitely, dramatically improve, enhance, and change our lives in every imaginable fashion. Within 20 years, we will have a computer the size of a six-sided die that is likely as powerful, if not more powerful, than the brain in your skull. Yet, a lot of people are scared of that idea. The idea of computers surpassing our own capacities. Yet, why? We created these things, and we will be in control of them, and they will bring us up. There will be a symbiotic relationship between technology and humanity. By the time 2050 comes around, the two forces of technology and organisms will be so interfused that there will be no telling the difference between the two of them. And that, my friends and listeners, will be a very momentous occasion for humanity. At any rate, I've been ranting on about this subject for nearly 10 minutes, and I'd hate to run out of YouTube time, so it's probably time for me to end this little rant of mine, though I will definitely be back with more. This is Zelatov. Peace out.